Hello, gear nerds of the internet, record nerds of the internet, and uh, anyone else interested in determining whether or not the Manny 2 is right for you, that does rhyme, uh, my apologies, or are you, if you're interested in any other phono preamp, making sure that the photo preamp will work with the cartridge that you have, or the cartridge that you want will work with the phono preamp that you want, we're going to discuss loading, we're going to discuss gain, we're going to discuss uh, capacitance loading as well as um, impedance loading. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff. Um, so the Manny 2 and many photo preamps have the ability to run moving coil and moving magnet cartridges. Uh, let's look up a common type of moving magnet cartridge. So the Orthophon, Orthophon 2M red. We'll go with the red. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to want to look at the specs. So if you have a turntable with a Ortofon 2M Red, this will be pertinent to you. Or actually, it goes it's basically the same specs all the way up the line. Uh, basically, the only difference is that they have different styli. The shape is different. So there's three different characteristics we're going to care about. Uh, we're going to look at the technical data, and we're going to look at the output voltage. This one is 5.5 uh, millivolts, which is quite high, actually. Uh, normally, it's between 4 and 5, so 5.5 is relatively high. Uh, so then we're going to look at the load resistance, which is uh, 47k ohm, which is very typical for moving magnet cartridge. Um, I don't want to say all because I don't know all, but almost all will use 47k ohm of loading. And then we're also going to care about this. This is the recommending recommended load capacitance, and this is 150 to 300 picofarad. That's what the PF means, picofarad. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the manual and we're going to say, okay, the default is 42 dB of gain. The 33 is probably too low, but it might be a good place to start. If you're going to set it to 47K ohm of load, it's going to have 47 picofarad automatically assigned to it of um, capacitance loading. Capacitance loading. So you can actually set it from 50. We'll round that up to 50, 150, or 200. Um, right, as it says right down here. So let's look at the bottom of our, our Manny. So for our intents and purposes, we're going to ignore the filtering. We don't care about this for what we're talking about. So our loading, we're going to set all of this to off or to the left. And that's going to set it to 47 K ohm. So to the left. To the left. And then since our capacitance should be between 150 and 300, you can turn all of these on. This will give you 200 ohm, or I'm sorry, picofarad of capacitance loading. So you're going to want to have those set to the right. Now, you could, like I said, try setting this all off, all of these off. The left, the left, and see how that sounds. My guess is that it's not going to be quite loud enough. So what you're probably going to want to do is you're probably going to want to have these two off, and then this one on, which is the default setting from the factory. So this is going to work with uh, a fair amount of cartridges. You need to look up your moving magnet cartridge to verify if uh, what the capacitance should be. Some of them are going to be 100, some are going to be 150. So 
You want to look that up. You want to then play with it to see what sounds best to your ear. So maybe you're saying, hey, I don't have a moving magnet cartridge. I have a moving coil that is high output. So one of the more common is the DL110 from Denon. Uh, it's now $400. This thing used to be like $120, which was a nice, real nice bargain. Uh, $400. There's a lot of cartridges better than this, I think, than at $400. Uh, so I'd recommend not buying that. So what you would want to do is go to the Denon site and look at the tech specs of the DL110. And so from the Denon site, we're going to want to go to specifications. And the technical spe specifications here are a little light. It tells us what the output, output voltage is, 1.6 millivolts, which, as you can tell, is significantly lower than the 5.5 on the 2M Red. But it doesn't tell us what we want to use for capacitance or for impedance loading. So... Thank you for nothing, Denon. We are going to try someplace else. We're going to try LP Gear. So LP Gear is a website that sells turntable styli. No, go away. Styli, phono preamps, turntables, headphones, cartridges, and belts. So pretty much anything you might want to use. Um, I'm not... This isn't sponsored by LP Gear. I don't even know that I've ever bought anything from LP Gear, so I couldn't even tell you if it's a great company or not. Let's assume that they are because they've been around for a while. At the very least, they're going to have the tech specs that we need. So, like I said, 1.6. The uh, loading is 47K, like a moving magnet re re would require, but then you notice a lack of capacitance loading, so we're going to assume that uh, there really ought not be any. So, back to here. So this is how we're going to configure this guy. Um, we're not going to do that, even though I just did that. Pretend like I didn't. These are going to be off. I guess I didn't have to remove these. These are going to be off. These are going to be off. 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 And then we're going to want to consult the manual for the gain settings. So let's go back to the manual. So our options are 33 dB, 42 dB, 48 dB, and 60 dB of gain. 42 is going to probably be insufficient. 60 is probably going to be too much, so we're going to go with a 48, which means we need to put the input on low and the output on high, so basically the inversion of the moving magnet. So we're going to go on, on, and then off, off. And then, so this will go to the left. And these will go to the right. And that should be how you'd want to set up a moving coil with a high output, uh, high, high output moving coil. So now you're thinking, well, I don't have a high output, I have a low or, you know, normal output moving coil cartridge. So, okay. We are going to then choose the Denon 103. DL 103, because that's a popular one. And look, it's actually cheaper by $50 than the 110. And this, my friends, is a much better cartridge than that one. So I recommend getting this if you have a... Uh, phono preamp that will actually support it because this one needs a lot of gain and 60 db is kind of stretching it but we're going to assume that it's going to be fine so let's look at we're going to ignore the denon site since 
they're clearly not going to give us all the specs that we need, so we're going to find our friends at LP Gear again, way down here. I don't understand how Google uh, shows us uh, the LP Gear site at the top and then at the bottom. Eh, you know, what are you going to do? All right, so tech specs. 3.3 millivolt, that's way low, as we can tell, because the last one was, what, 1.5? And 5.5? So we're really down low. Um, so then we're looking for this. Recommended load resistance, 100 ohms or more. So this means that if um, you have less than 100 ohms of loading available to you, this is not going to really function properly. This is the problem that I ran into with the Manny 1, where it only had 47 ohms of load, and I needed at least 100. And in fact, I find that the Denon DL301 MK2 that I have, which is somewhat similar uh, to the 103, requires uh, you know 200 to 300 that really sound its best, but 100 works. Now I'd like to point out too that there's it says output impedance ignore output impedance we're looking for load resistance which is also measured in ohms so it's also an impedance so that's a little confusing but again you're looking for your load not for your output impedance so we know we're going to go with 60 dB of gain and we're going to want 200 ohms of load so we'll go back to the bottom of our many and we will go on, on, off, off. So if you're thinking like, well, if I put both of these on, wouldn't it be 147 ohms of load? Uh, that's not the way it works for some reason. Apparently, if you put both of them on, you're then getting like 38 ohms of load, according to the manual which is not what we want at all. We don't want to go down. So this is going to be off. This is going to be off. We're going to ignore this because this is not really applicable to the moving coil side of things. And then, so we're going to be on and on, on and on. So those are going to go here and here. So this is will work for any moving coil low output moving coil that requires between let's say 100 and 200 or maybe even lower but you know you could for like a something that actually requires 47 ohm of load this will work probably pretty well too um but if you have one of those you really want to try the 47 first and then do the 200. So let's talk about instances of cartridges that are is not, just not going to work with the Manny 2. Um, you have a lot of options here, but not all the options you would require for certain cartridges. So let's, I know one for certain that's not going to work, and that is the HANA. HANA. So the HANA comes in two different varieties. Um, <clears throat> it comes in the high and the low output. So the high output is 2 millivolts, which is decently high. It's 5.5 millivolts higher than the DL110 we looked at earlier. Where are our specifications? Oh, we're going to hide them over here. Uh, so same loading. So this will work with the, the Manny 2. This guy, the EL, the low, requires a loading of 400. So that is not sufficient. The 200 is not sufficient to make this cartridge sound good. Will it work? Yeah, it'll work, but it won't sound good. And if you're paying $500 for this cartridge and then $150 for the Phono preamp, it's better just finding a photo preamp that's going to work with this than um, one that's not going to sound its best. Uh, like I think the Ebotiva has 470 ohm, uh, 470 ohm 
loading and that's like 120 bucks and that's so that's a little cheaper i prefer the sound of the mani 2 but it's definitely not the mani 2 is definitely not going to sound better than the emotiva if you're using this cartridge so if you have any questions about any of this stuff or if i made anything not as clear as i could have let me know in the comments uh like and subscribe i really would love some subscribers i have almost 400 awesome people that are subscribed it would be nice to have at least a thousand awesome people that are subscribed i will of course answer any questions about anything again this isn't I, i'm not paid by anyone i'm not paid by shit i'm not paid by lp gear i'm not paid by denon or ortofon or anybody i'm just trying to help you guys out trying to get you guys the best sound and the least amount of headaches possible when you're picking your gear for your turntable. Uh, so have a nice day, guys. Bye-bye.